This video provides the solutions and discussion for exercise 1, connecting to Jasmine. It's assumed that you've already watched the first video describing the task. This video shows the details of how to do it. Just a reminder of our scenario and the objectives for this task. And it was divided into three steps. The first step being connecting to a login server using a terminal client. So let's have a look at how we do that. First, I'm going to choose the login server from the available help documentation. So here I'm selecting the server login1.jasmine.ac.uk. So first I can check whether my key is loaded. Remember the process of loading the key is covered in exercise zero about setting up your machine uh, with everything you need ready to access Jasmine. So if I do SSH add minus L, should list all the keys I currently have loaded and I can see that the right key is loaded for me there. So now I'm ready to give the command to connect to the login server and here we've got ssh minus a my username at the server I chose which is login1.jasmine.ac.uk and once I'm logged in, I can see the message of the day screen, which gives the summary of all the available SI servers and some usage information for them. So I can look through this list and choose one that's not too overloaded. But first of all, I can check where I am at the moment with the print working directory command, pwd. And so this is the location of my home directory, home, users, and my username. And I can check on the current usage of that using this command here, pdu minus s for summary and h for human readable. So it tells me I've got 19 megabytes currently being used. But now if I want to make my onward connection to the sign machine, um, the first thing I probably want to do is check that my um, key is actually able to make that onward connection. So I can do ssh add minus l again. And again, it should list me the keys that are currently available to me. Um, just note that error message there, that can be ignored as long as I can see um, the key that I expect to find there um, then it should be available for me to use in the onward connection. So now I can give the command to connect to the sign machine that I chose. So SSH minus capital A X um, train 050, that's my username in this case, sci1.jasmine.ac.uk and I see the same message of the day screen again when I get to uh, the Sci machine once I've logged in. Once I'm here, I can just uh, I was going to uh, just issue a simple command in this case, the host name command, and it just tells me the full name of the host that I've just logged into. Um, so that's successfully logged into um, the Sci machine. So now we're going to um, make a connection to one of the NX login machines using no machine enterprise client. So for this we're going to locate and just check the details of the connection profile that we made for the uh, NX login server we chose. That's something that we set up in exercise zero and a couple of other steps involved um, before we can actually make the connection. So let's have a look at how we do that. So first of all, we open the NX client and we can locate the connection profile that we previously made. It's worth just double checking the settings because it does have a habit sometimes of forgetting some of the things we've set. So we're just checking the host name, uh, where our private key is located. It's actually forgotten here the forward authentication uh, um, setting. So that's really important to just set. Then we can press connect and this will make the connection. I need to confirm the username that I want to connect with and I've got the password stored in a password manager separately so I'm just going to paste that in. And now we'll see a series of um, screens just customising my own environment to my preferences. I'm not going to change anything here but if you do change anything you can say you can just click don't show this anymore and it will remember your settings for next time hopefully. So once you've clicked through this set of screens, you should be presented with your um, remote Linux desktop on the NX login server. And if you go to the activities menu, top left there, you can then select the terminal application. 
Um, so just select terminal and this will give you a command line terminal on that um, desktop. So we can just uh, issue a command like just like we would in the terminal environment on an own machine. So I've got host name, gives me the name of the full name of the host I've just logged into. Now in this case I'm not presented with the list of sign machines, so I can do that myself manually using this command here, cat etc matd, the message of the day, and that will present me the list of sign machines and uh, the number of users, memory usage, that kind of thing, so I can choose the one that I want to log into. As I did before though, it's worth just checking that my um, key is loaded and available for that onward connection. So the same as before, um, I can actually ignore the message that is given there um, because I can see that my key is loaded, so I'm confident that it should work. So I'm now ready to do the final steps in our task, which is to make the onward connection to the SI server. Um, so let's just run through how we would do that. So I can now give the command to log into the SI server. So SSH minus capital A X, uh, my username at uh, the server I selected, SI1.jasmine. And when I'm, when I'm logged in, I'm presented with uh, the message of the day again. Um, this time I can give a host name command just to um, confirm the host of the, the name of the host that I'm logged into. And uh, this time I'm going to give a, a command which is going to open up a little graphical application, a clock should appear on the desktop so I know that the graphics side of things is working properly. So we're just going to exit out of Psi1 we're back to the NX login one server, and uh, just worth pointing out um, that on the NX login one server, there's a Firefox web browser. So this is useful for accessing any web applications that are available only within Jasmine. Um, but when I've finished, I can close uh, this terminal window and then log out of the NX virtual desktop, like I'm shown here and then I'm back to the NX client, uh, which I can um, close on my own machine. Now that we've completed the task, let's have a look at some of the best practice issues around connecting. So first of all, let's have a look at SSH keys. Um, it's really important for security reasons that you protect your SSH key, your private key, um, with a strong passphrase. Um, you must do this and it helps keep Jasmine secure for both you and for uh, all the um, uh, roughly 2,000 or more than 2,000 users we have on Jasmine now so it's really crucial that you do that. Um, you mustn't share your SSH key with any other user. We have a strict one user, one key policy. And if you are found to be um, sharing your key with other users um, you could be uh, prevented from using the system, the system in future. So please don't share your key. Um, also, uh, please don't edit your um, authorised keys file. Uh, this is what's this is a little file which is in your uh, .ssh directory on Jasmine, um, but this is populated automatically by the system um, with the public key that you've uploaded to your Jasmine account profile. So if you edit this file, perhaps to add, um, add another key or you think um, you can do that, um, what will happen is it will just get automatically overwritten um, by the one key that you have in your Jasmine account profile. And that's the system we've got, and everything uh, that you need to get to on Jasmine is controlled through that one SSH key. Um, so just a note about uh, the different servers. Um, obviously the login servers are just login nodes. Um, they perform one function, and that's just to provide a hop to other resources with inside Jasmine. They're not to be used for any um, processing themselves, um, uh, so please uh, just use them as a, as a login hop. Um, that, that preserves their functionality uh, for that purpose for, for everybody. You can also check for a less busy sign machine before connecting. Um, you're presented with a list of the uh, available sign machines when you log into uh, one of the login servers and uh, this can help uh, choose one that uh, either doesn't have so many users logged into it or whose memory or CPU resources are not under heavy load at the time. Um, it, it can be tempting to set up a, an alias uh, to your uh, favourite um, sign machine, but this can be counterproductive in that you could be routed to 
uh, that machine, even though uh, that's not the, the one where you get the best performance on that particular day. So be prepared to swap around using uh, different sign machines. Uh, one of the other exercises will cover how to use uh, the sign machines and the best practice associated with using those in more detail. Similarly with the NX login servers, they're provided um, with uh, some special software on them to enable the graphical desktop and it's best if those resources are preserved for users who need to use the graphical desktop. Let's have a look now at um, some of the questions that we asked earlier. Um, the first one is uh, what's different about servers login2.jasmine and nx login2.jasmine compared to their siblings? And the answer is that they provide a contingency configuration, uh, like a backup way in um, for users whose uh, local network connection isn't able to uh, provide the forward and reverse DNS lookup um, that Jasmine uh, normally requires. This is a way that we can, um, it's just one uh, of the many layers of security that we have on Jasmine um, that helps uh, keep the bad guys out. Um, so normally you would connect from your institutional network um, at your university or research institute. Um, and it's normally possible for those, uh, for the IP address you are assigned on your uh, own computer uh, to be resolved to uh, the domain of your institution. And that helps us narrow down uh, who we open up Jasmine to. Um, but we appreciate that um, in some cases that's not always possible and so we provide um, these machines as an alternative way in uh, for where uh, that's not possible to be arranged. We would ask you to sort of check with your uh, local network IT um, team um, first just to check whether it's possible um, and also you know if you're working on your home broadband um, it's normally possible for most people to connect to their institution first via a virtual private network or VPN. And on uh, those, you would normally be assigned an IP address uh, belonging to your institution. And uh, quite often it's just a case of asking your local IT service to make sure that the IP address you're assigned in that case um, does have forward reverse uh, DNS lookup, um, but you would need to speak to them to arrange it. It's not a Jasmine problem. This is provided as a backup in case all those options uh, just don't work. Moving on then, um, uh, question two was uh, about how often your home directory is backed up and how you go about restoring from it if you accidentally deleted something. So I've highlighted an article here um, in the help system which uh, talks about what we call snapshot backups. So these are automatically uh, created and you can restore data uh, small number of files, for example, um, in a self-service manner. Just help yourself to them from uh, whichever um, snapshot uh, has um, the data that you've lost. And those are kept for uh, roughly a week. Um, there's also a second system uh, which is maintained by the system team uh, of tape backups and those run on a three to four week cycle. But if you need to retrieve something from those, you would need to um, speak to the Jasmine help desk to have that arranged for you. And the final question was um, about the shell used on Jasmine, so the shell environment, once you've logged in, how can you tell uh, which shell it is? If you um, use the command echo dollar shell, uh, it should return um, slash bin slash bash. So it's the bash shell that's used on Jasmine, and that's one of the uh, most commonly used shells in the sort of Linux environment. Um, but that does raise quite a good point about documentation and training in general, um, in that uh, there's a lot of third-party tools, um, some of them part of the operating system, some of them tools that have been installed um, specifically for the communities we support. Um, but those tools quite often have uh, very good existing documentation that's out there already, um, so there's little point in us uh, duplicating that. Um, and so um, for quite a lot of the uh, tools and software that are available on Jasmine, your first port of call should actually be the official documentation for those um, tools themselves. Um, so please refer to those. Okay, that brings us to the end of um, this video. Um, so uh, as before, if you need any further information, um, there's the uh, Jasmine website address um, and the address of the help documentation. Um, please have a look in the help documentation first, see if you can find what you're looking for. If you really can't, then um, by all means uh, contact the Jasmine help desk at the email address shown.